bring food over, and, and I can't just tell you all the things you've done, but you've done them, and we're really grateful. If I miss anybody, I'm sorry. So the gospel story today is the foundation of NSI's DNA, and the verses literally hang on the door outside my office, and um, I love to talk about the Good Samaritan story. It is my favorite parable in the Bible. And um, there are so many facets of it that, that I want to talk about, but I'm only going to do my top three. Because even though you're Baptist and I understand that if I stand up here for an hour and a half, it's okay. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do that. It's beautiful outside. And uh, I would like you to ask me back, so <laughs> let me do that. But uh, I'm going to make three points, and they are this. Who is my neighbor? How am I to treat my neighbor? And the third is the challenge question of the day, and that's how are you living? So who is my neighbor? The lawyer asked that, and I think it's the wrong question. In the gospel lesson, the lawyer is asking this as a limiting, seeking question. It aims to identify the non-neighbor, the one beyond his moral obligation. So another way of saying this is, who are the people I'm not expected to love like I'm supposed to love God? And Jesus takes this question and flips it around in a couple different ways. First, by using the Samaritan in the story. And by changing the question to who was neighbor to the robber's victim. Uh, you know. How many of us view our neighbor as an object? The recipient of duty. A quid pro quo, so to speak. Because Jesus doesn't view neighbors like that. He sees them as a proactively loving subject. As, um, I'm going to steal something from a rabbi, from uh, Yaakov Prinz, he noted that neighbor is not a geographic term, it's a moral concept. I'm say that again. Neighbor is not a geographic term, it's a moral concept. So neighbors are not just people who live near us. They're all people, regardless of who they are or where they're from. So who's my neighbor? That's the wrong question to ask. Instead, we should ask, what kind of neighbor am I? Or to whom am I a neighbor? The second point is, how am I to treat my neighbor? And the parable gives us an example to follow. We're going to treat our neighbors with love, mercy, and compassion. And Jesus tells this story, which Aaron so nicely read. I'm sorry, I'm trying to. Yeah. Okay. And for a man traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, this is the only parable where they give a specific geographic location. And that's because the road from Jerusalem down to Jericho it was notoriously unsafe. Full of switchbacks and high-walled canyons. Everyone knew that you did not travel alone. No one at that time would have had sympathy for the guy that got beat up. He got what was coming to him. He deserved it. Sounds a lot like how people talk about um, the neighbors at NSI sometimes. Especially in the media. I don't know. The priest and the Levite, they pass by on the opposite side of the road. They're creating more distance between themselves and the man that was left for dead. Um, Pope Francis, uh, cites this as an example of the globalization of indifference. And I really don't have enough time to speak about the hyperpartisanship where winning is seen as more important than a shared common 
good or how the demonization of people has become normal or how hard it is for, for people to recognize that we all belong to each other, rely on each other, and ultimately be judged on how we treat each other. That would take more than an hour and a half. Um, but whenever we think, that's not my problem. They're not my tribe. We're also passing on the opposite side of the road. Also, the Samaritan, all of his actions, they are more, there's more detailed description uh, than anyone else in the Gospels except for Jesus. And I found that to be really fascinating. I wonder why. And I think it's because Jesus is describing what it means to be a neighbor, to act with courage. You know, going into that ditch where the Samaritan could also have been ambushed was very risky. It was outside his comfort zone. And he showed compassion. He reacted to the other person's suffering. And he showed mercy by putting his own feelings to one side and caring for a person in dire straits. He was generous. The oil and the wine to heal his wounds and the payment for the recovery at the end. And finally, the Samaritan broke boundaries. He enlisted the care of others to take care of the neighbor. And he showed that they were all in this together. And I gotta say, the Samaritan was not somebody that the Jewish man would have liked for a lot of reasons. It's kind of like how things are going by now. Um, he would have been considered an enemy, an outcast. And I wanna make a couple really, really important points right now about this. The Samaritan was not out looking for help to help somebody. He didn't quit his job. He didn't abandon his family in order to start to save the road to Jericho. Uh, he saw someone in need. And he went out of his way and into the ditch to ease another person's suffering. And then he went on his way. And this is a story about what we can do. No more, no less. Everyone can and should be like the Samaritan. So the challenge question. How are you living? Um, I recently changed, changed from asking people how are you to how you live. Uh, and the reason I did that is because every time you ask somebody how are you, what do they say? I'm oh, fine. Everything's great. Kids are doing great. Work's okay. Everything. But when you ask somebody how you live, people ask answer differently. They say, I'm not. I'm barely getting by. I'm too busy working to know. This pandemic is making me crazy. I hate masks. What? Huh? It's, it's really interesting. Because nobody asks people that anymore. Or, or for the most part. So in this parable, the lawyer asks, how are you to get eternal life? And then he answers his own question. The way to eternal life is loving God and your neighbors. And Jesus says, hey, you're right. Do this and you will live. And it's not enough for this to be a mental exercise where we think about it and we think, yes, that's a good thing to do. We should do that. I should do that sometimes. You have to do it. You have to get out there and make it part of you. And you have to live like a Samaritan. And I don't know about you, but I frequently find this difficult to do. I sometimes find it to be overwhelming, and, and I, I still think I can handle it. 
handle that. So here's some comforting things. Something to boost you up. Jesus does not say go and do exactly the same thing that the Samaritan did. Or do this every once in a while. Jesus says he wants us to apply the Samaritan's courage and his compassion and his generosity and his boundary-breaking solidarity in our everyday lives to advocate and help for our neighbor. And you're doing it without even knowing you're doing it because of NSI. I don't know if you know, but because of you, NSI thrives. Through Friday, which was the last day we were open, we have served 8,750 families. That's 29,852 people. We've distributed 584,029 meals. And in addition, Easter, uh, NSI does Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas food baskets. We have a back to school backpack program. We collaborate with Feed the Kids to give out, uh, we give backpacks for kids to take home on Fridays after they leave school so they've got food for the weekends. Yes, that happens. And uh, we uh, supply food to the largest table at St. John's downtown because they have the open shelter and they have a uh, a hot meal for people who are homeless every Wednesday. Uh, we do AARP tax aid. We do rent and utility assistance. And we just got a very nice grant to do that. We actually had to hire somebody because we have so many people asking for rent and utility assistance. Um, we have a senior food box delivery program. We do pop-up pantry events at uh, Gems and at the Grand School and at Riverview International. And we have Christmas toy adoption. And the plug part, NSI is always looking for direct retail pickup, help, and volunteers. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, so you're doing it. And we are all doing it. Sometimes we don't even know we're doing it. And that's the hopeful part of this. This is the reason that there is this story, this parable, in, um, in the Bible. I think Jesus is telling us exactly how we need to be to live. Thanks for this opportunity and for letting me come. I also want to do one last thing. I want to invite you to come to NSI. If you've not been there, you should come up on the corner of 4th and 18th. Uh, there's a sign above the door. Um, and we are always there between 9 and 4 every day. Uh, well, Monday through Friday. Sundays, I'm somewhere. So thank you again. And continue to do the good.